Hello. Hello out there. I'm about to start my stretching relax class. Hi everybody. I've set up the room already. We're ready to go. Um, today is Monday, April 20th. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I've lost track of time. The other day I thought it was already Monday, but it was it was still Sunday or Saturday, I forgot. So I don't know, sense of time, forgetting that it's a weekend or weekday. I don't know if you guys feel the same. Anyways, um, yeah, we're about to start our stretching relax class. And um, for today's class, obviously I, I love it when you guys have props. Um, I can't really see what you're doing, so um, most of the exercises you can still do without props, so don't worry about it. But I've prepared myself uh, a blanket and two blocks and a strap, okay? If, um, if you don't have straps, you can actually use a small towel in, instead of a strap, okay? So go ahead and grab those things. If you have a blanket, like even just a normal blanket, not a yoga blanket, but if you have a yoga blanket, that'd be the best. If you have a blanket of some sort, it'd be really nice because I'll teach you how to use the blanket to massage those calves, okay? So um, let's just get started then. We'll start in uh, meditation and do a little bit of pranayama to start with, okay? So go find your mat, um, grab a block or a blanket to sit on, and we'll start in swastikasana, okay? on your block or oh I forgot I have to turn off the comments otherwise you guys can't see so I, I do love to hear any comments I've had some students um, message me personally and then of course uh, any messages I, I get I will respond back to you guys so please leave me any feedback or comments or whatever say hi uh, leave me your name okay so I'm gonna turn off the comments and then we'll start the class Swastikasana, um, cross your shin bones, place your feet directly below your knees, widen your seat, and go ahead and close your eyes, placing your hands on your thighs, finding our center, and we find the breath through the nose, inhaling and exhaling. your feet, relax your knees, soften belly, grounding your seat to the block or the blanket, maybe the floor, using that grounding to lengthen your spine, lifting your chest, draw your shoulders back and down. Soften your eyes, soften your jaw, relax your neck. shoulders away from your ears. And as any thoughts come into your head, acknowledge those thoughts, but then go back to your breath. Focus on the breath. starting to tense up. Relax your eyebrows, relax your eyes, soften the eyes. Now begin to make your breath even deeper, finding that deep ujjayi breath. Listening to the sound of your breath, the hissing sound as you inhale. Expand the ribs, inhaling all the way to the top of your breath. Now once you have your last sip of breath, hold the, the breath. And then keeping your chest lifted, slow exhales. 
nice and slow, keeping the breath even. Again, inhaling, expanding the lungs, feeling the breath through your nose. And then at the top of the breath, hold your breath. Then slow exhales, releasing the air slowly and evenly. Feel the ground underneath you. Again, inhale, expand the lungs, bringing the air into the body, lifting the chest, hold your breath, and then slow exhales, releasing the air evenly, all the way to the bottom of your breath. Again, inhale, expand the ribs. See if you can get even another sip of air. Hold the breath. And then slow exhales, making the breath even. And then releasing all the way to the bottom of your breath, feeling the ground underneath you. Again, inhale through the nose. Feel the breath through the nose as your ribs start to expand. And again, at the top of your breath, try to take one last sip of air. Hold the breath. And then slow exhales, releasing the air evenly. All the way to the bottom of your breath. Feel the ground underneath you. Last one, inhale, expand the ribs. Taking a nice deep breath to the top of your breath. Sip a little breath, a uh, little bit more breath in. Hold the breath at the top of your breath. And then slow exhales, releasing the air slowly but evenly, feeling the ground underneath you. Find your natural breath. And bring your hands to your heart center, placing your thumbs at your sternum, evenly distributing the weight between your palms so that they're pressing evenly, opening the elbows wide, sitting nice and tall. Let's begin to fit today's practice with three ohms together. Take a deep inhale. Switch the cross of your legs, okay, and then reach forward in Adho Swastikasana. Really expand, expanding your, uh, extending your spine and reaching forward. Stretch the arms as far forward as you can, and then reach all the way to your right side, lengthening the, the right side of your body. Ground the left hip down towards the block or the blanket. And then come back to center. Reach over to the left side now. Extending your left side. Reach the arm. You'll feel the stretch along the right side of your body. Notice how the right hip wants to lift up. And then ground the right hip down towards your prop or the floor. Good, walk it back to center, reach forward again, and then slowly inhale, come up. Let's recross it to the first side, and then again, Adho Mukha Swastikasana, reaching forward, really extending, lengthening your spine as you go over, and keeping your hips heavy to the floor. 
So we'll walk it over to the right. Lengthen your spine and reach over as far to the right as you can, keeping that left hip down. And then we walk all the way to the other side again. Lengthen, hold over. Good, back to center. And inhale, slowly come up. Okay, remove your prop. And then we'll start lying down. Lying all the way down, I'm gonna lie this way. Okay, release your body completely. And then we're going to open our arms to the side like a T, making sure the arms are right where the shoulders are, so in one line. Then you bring the knees up to your chest, swing the legs over towards the right side, almost touching the armpit. So you want the knees to be high up. You need to bring the knees in first and then bring them over. Then we twist over your knees to the right side and then twisting your body towards the left. So roll the ribs towards the left. Bring the knees towards your chest again and go to your left side. So we want the knees to go up higher, closer to your armpits. Then you roll your belly and look over towards the right side. Good, back to center. This time extend the legs. Um, actually, I want you to bring the knees in and then go to your right side, but this time you're gonna extend the legs and grab the foot that's on the bottom. Extending the leg as much as you can, and then rolling over to the left. Trying to keep the feet even. So look towards the feet, make sure that the feet are matching on top of each other. And as you do that, start to roll your belly to the left. Knees first to your chest, then you bring them over to the left and extend the legs, grabbing underneath the left foot. Sometimes you can walk the shoulders so they're more even, match the feet, and then turn your belly to the right. your knees, 
from your knees, walk your hands forward and we'll come into a puppy dog stretch. So bring the chest towards the floor. Some of you might be able to bring just the chin or maybe the whole chest down. Together, knees together, interlace your fingers, palms forward and up. Push the ceiling, keeping your fingers all touching. Push the, uh, push your palms up towards the ceiling. Draw your belly in. Squeeze the arms straight. Keep the arms by your ears. Okay, not forward, but by your ears, pushing towards the ceiling, making your arms nice and long. Let's turn to your right side. Interlace the other fingers, palms forward and up. Remember to touch all the fingers, keeping your arms straight, push the ceiling. Draw your belly in, make your side body nice and long, keeping the arms by your ears. Inhale and turn to your right again. Turning from the back of your left rib, keeping the arms by your ears and not in front of your face. And then back to center. Left side. Good, back to center and release the arms. Okay, this is the part where if you have a blanket, take the blanket about like this, and then you're gonna roll the blanket. So if you don't have a blanket, don't worry. We're gonna sit in Varasana, hero pose. So your knees come together, you roll the calf muscles away from each other, and you sit between your heels, okay? If you have the blanket, you take the blanket roll, place it behind you, bring the blanket as far into your um, behind your knees as possible. Then you're going to sit down, and this is where we massage the calf muscles. Okay, so you might need to wiggle a little bit, kind of lean the weight from side to side, and bring it a little bit back more. From there, arms out, Garudasana arms, eagle arms. So from here, bring that the elbows up and then draw the shoulders back and down. How's that blanket feeling for some of you? I like to bounce it around and kind of go from side to side. And release the arms. Now you're going to bring that blanket a little bit lower. So if you don't have a blanket, don't worry about it. Other side, Garudasana arms, eagle arms, bringing the elbows up. Draw the shoulders back and down. And release the arms. Let it get down one more time. Some of you might keep the blanket there because it might feel comfortable for this pose. If you don't need the blanket, remove the blanket, sit all the way on the floor. If you need that block, go ahead and grab the block. Inhale, reach your arms up. Turn to your right, left hand outside of your right thigh, and then right fingertips behind you. If you're on a block, uh, take another block behind you, and the right fingertips will go onto the block. So we turn and twist. Opening up that, that right shoulder, and inhale back to center. Left side. So when we're in this twist, you don't want to lean back. Keep your spine nice and straight as you twist. Good, inhale back to center again. This time, twist again. You're going to take the right palm and turn it out and grab your left foot. See if you can grab the left foot. If you cannot grab the left foot, just do the same thing we did on the first side. Open up that right shoulder, twist and roll the belly. Good, inhale back to center, other side. So a lot of times I have to kind of lean back and reach, maybe even lift up my, my knees to grab. 
grab the, the foot. And you use your right hand to push the thigh, and you open up the left shoulder. Good, back to center. Inhale, exhale, downward facing dog to release the knees. And then come down to your knees. You're gonna bring the left knee behind and then sit between the feet. So the knees are on top of each other and you're sitting on the floor and your heels are outside of each other, uh, outside of your hips, okay? Reach your arms up and then turn your right palm out Bring it behind you, Garudas, uh, Gomukhasana arms. Okay, interlace and clasp the, the fingers. If you can't clasp, then you can take that small towel or the strap to help you. Okay, option, stay here or lean forward. Keeping that right hip from coming off the floor. Ground both sit bones to the floor. Keep the left elbow away from the floor. Good, inhale back to center. Release the arms and then come forward. Right leg behind. So the right knee crosses behind. When you sit, the left knee is on top. Inhale, reach your arms up. Left palm goes behind. Walk the hand up and then clasp the fingers. Now staying here or folding forward. Keep the left sit bone down to the floor. If you don't have blocks, you can place your, uh, your hands behind your hips, pushing the hips forward. But we don't want it to be here. We want you to really sit forward. Good, switch sides. Left leg forward. Again, bring your right knee up, and then turn your knee down facing the floor before you bring it down and bend your left knee deeply until the back of your left calf muscle is almost touching the back of your left thigh. Lifting your chest, really sit into the left leg. Open up that right groin. Step the right leg forward again. Left knee down. We're going to come into Gekko pose. So again, I like to um, bring the right left knee up and then turn it down towards the floor more. So we're squaring the hips more. Bring your elbows to the floor. Now don't let the thigh rest like this. Keep your hips more squared. Walk your right foot over to the left side. We'll come into a pigeon pose. 
From pigeon pose, tuck the back foot and again lift that left knee up. Turn it down towards the floor. Draw your left hip forward. And you can bring the foot down and then point your toe. Reach forward for sleeping pigeon. everything straight, arms, legs straight, and step the left leg forward into your gecko pose. So you bring the right knee down, again, bring that knee up first, turn the right knee down towards the floor, and then you can come onto your elbows. Making sure that you don't just drop the thigh down, the right thigh down, relax here. You want to draw the right hip forward, keeping um, keeping that knee pointing down and not rolling over to the side. Open it, opening up the hips. Now if this is too difficult for you, you can always be on a block or you can come onto your hands, okay? Okay, let's come up and walk the foot over to the right side for pigeon. Again, tuck your back foot, turn that knee down towards the floor, point your toe, and then reach forward. If you're more flexible, then you would bring this left foot up more so that it's more parallel to the knee. about bringing the inner heel towards the outer heel to feel the widening of your hips. Good, slowly release the arms. And 
and come down. Okay, if you have any props, grab your blanket or you can sit on a block as well. So I'm gonna grab a blanket, I'm gonna grab two blankets. Okay, some of you might sit on a block. Okay. So you have two options here. Sitting on something just makes it a little bit easier. If you need to, if you don't have any props, you need to sit on the floor, that's fine as well. If you are sitting on a prop, make sure you have another block behind you, okay? So you're gonna reach the left arm up and then hook over the right leg and turn and twist. So it looks like this when I'm facing you. You have this leg in and then the other leg out a little bit. You hook and you start to twist. Okay. Now if you're near a wall, you can use the wall instead to help you twist by using your hand to push. It's actually quite nice when you have the wall. You can really get a better twist. Now notice that right knee, make sure the right knee is pointing straight up and it's not going inwards. You want it to go straight up. So there's an action of the leg pushing against the arm. Good, back to center, release, other side. Open the right leg a little bit. Bring this uh, left foot close to your prop. Inhale, reach your right arm up and hook. Now I like to roll my belly more and go deeper. Again, check this left knee, making sure that it's pushing against the arm and it's straight up, it's not going inwards. So there's an equal action of the leg pushing against the arm to help you with the rotation and the twist. Good, back to center. Other side, first side again. This time you can go for a bind. Now I'll show you facing forward so you understand how to do the bind, okay? Start with your leg out more. Then when you hook, instead of just hooking here, you need to round the upper back and like really roll that layer of like skin and fat over to the right. And then you walk this elbow lower. You keep doing that until you feel like you've twisted to your limit. From there, you take this hand and roll it inwards and around your shin. Then from there, reach the other hand behind and see if you can clasp the, the hands. If you have the clasp, you bring the leg back to center and start to lengthen your spine and twist. So this pose is a lot easier when you're lifted up on a blanket or a block. If you can't find the bind, then you go for the first, uh, the first, the easier um, variation that we did the first round, okay? Okay, back to center. Whew, hard to talk at the same time. Other side, okay, again, reach this leg out first, then we hook the elbow. Then you need to roll everything, roll. Sometimes I need to take my hand and physically roll the fat and walk it deeper. Once you've gone the deepest you can, then you take this hand, roll it inwards, and turn it over your shin. So sometimes this, it'll get stuck. You feel like your arm can't move anymore, but you can actually use this hand to help you push it up, push it up, and then reach. And then bring that right foot back to center, lengthen, and twist. Go ahead and do the, eat the First, the modified version if you need to. Don't worry about the bind if you don't have it yet. Good. Back to center. Release, breathe, remove blocks. That one always, I always feel like I can't breathe after that one. Okay, we're gonna come into Upavishta, Panasana. So you're gonna sit on your mat in the center but at, the, at one end, end of the mat, your heels on the other end. Don't go any wider than this, no matter how flexible you are. Widen your seat. Some of you might need to sit on a block or a blanket if your knees are bent or if you're kind of rounding that way. Inhale, reach your arms up. Hook your thumbs. Draw your belly in. Make your spine nice and long. See if you can get your back as straight as you can. So not arching forward and not arching, not rounding back, okay? As straight as you can. 
Turn to your right leg without touching your foot. Go further past the right foot, grounding that left thigh. See how far down you can go, keeping your arms by your ears. So this is an active stretch. Good, inhale back to center. Hook the other thumb. Lengthen and twist to the left. Reach past your foot. So you're not touching your foot. Your arms are not coming down. You're keeping your arms by your ears. The key is to squeeze those thigh muscles. Squeeze the thighs. Draw the right thigh down to the floor. Good, inhale back to center. And release. Reach for your big toes or maybe your shins, okay? I'm gonna reach forward, lengthening the spine. Keep lengthening the spine and squeezing the legs. Don't go down yet. Keep lengthening. It's harder to stay up. It's harder to stay up and hover over the floor than it is to touch the floor if you're flexible. Squeeze the thighs. Now, only if your belly button touches the ground first, then you can go all the way down. Keeping the feet pointing straight up, not curling in. Don't relax your thighs. Keep squeezing those thighs. Good. Now bring your arms forward, and then inhale, come up. Exhale, release. Okay, inhale again. Turn to your right, this time left hand outside of your right foot. Right fingertips to the floor, lengthen and twist. So your spine is like upward facing dog. We're just twisting right now. Don't fold over yet. Find the twist, lengthen. Now fold over. You can bring the right hand inside of the foot and keep the elbows up away from the floor. Take your left hand inside of your left foot, keeping the elbows up away from the floor. Keep squeezing the thighs down to the floor, squeezing the knees straight. Good, inhale, come up. Exhale, release. Keep your legs there. We're gonna inhale, arms up. Turn this time to the left side. Turn as far as you can. Really rolling to the left from the back of your right rib. Okay, from there you're gonna reach your right arm forward and this arm is gonna reach for this leg. Okay, if you can't reach the foot, then you take a belt or a strap. Sometimes you can take like a tie or your, a belt that's flexible or a small towel and you would take opposite hand and you walk you bend this elbow, walk your hand through, and slowly start to turn and open the chest, okay? If you can grab the foot, walk this right arm further, deeper, so that the right shoulder is in front of the leg, and then you can catch the foot. Start to turn. Start to turn. Now take the right hand inside of the foot and start to open up the elbows, turning your chest. Turn your chest towards the ceiling, open the elbows, head back. So remember, you can be using the strap. You don't have to catch the foot. Turn a little more, opening up the elbows. And release. Whew. Slowly come up. Okay, the arms up, turn to your right. Get your belt ready if you need it. Keep turning to your right, roll the belly. And then you do like a back bend, reaching this arm forward and then catching the foot or catching that belt. So I like to walk this arm deeper. I kind of like turn my body to the, to the right a little bit and get that shoulder deeper. 
before you grab the foot. Then you take this hand, catch the inside of the foot, and start to open the elbow up, uh, both elbows away from each other, and turn your chest. So you're trying to get the chest to face up towards the ceiling. Head back. Turn. Roll the belly to the right. Open up the chest. And slowly release. Whew. Come back to center. Knees together for a second. Now your foot back. How are we doing? Okay? Lots of twists today. Okay, so you're going to come into Janusher Shasana leg. So keeping that right leg out, we just bend this leg. But we keep it like... So if it's Upakvishta Konasana, you're just bending the left leg in like that and keeping that shape. Okay, this time, inhale, reach your arms up, look, uh, turn to your left side, bring your right hand onto your knee, and start to turn. Turn your chest, rolling to the left. Now again, we do the same sort of back bend type of thing, bringing this shoulder in, shoulder uh, forward, and grab your foot. You can do the same thing with the belt that, that we did in the other pose. Okay, go ahead and take your option. Then from there, catch the inner foot. Open up the elbow. So it's the same position, the Pavrita twisting action, but with the bent leg in Janusharshasana. Opening the elbows, turning your chest. Turn your chest, open the elbows, turn more, roll the belly, and slowly release. Good, open up your left leg. Then we bend the right knee. Okay, inhale, reach your arms up. Left hand onto the knee or the thigh. And we start to find a twist. Then reach the right arm up. Slowly back bend. Maybe walk this arm forward. And then get your, right sh uh, your left shoulder forward in front of your left leg. Grab your foot. Open the elbows. Open the elbows. And turn your chest. Turn your chest, roll the belly to the right, open up the chest, head back, turn more. Push the left elbow against the leg to turn. Good, slowly release. Oh. And have your knees to your chest. Whew. I know twisting doesn't feel good during it, but actually after you feel a lot better, as long as you haven't eaten too much before this class. Okay. Okay, let's sit in Virasana. So both knees bent. Sit between your heels. Okay, have your belt handy. Your strap, your strap or your small towel handy. Okay, from there you're gonna release the right leg. Okay, so we have half Virasana with the left leg. You're gonna take your belt around the foot, and then bring your foot up, okay? Hmm. I'll kind of go at a diagonal so you can see better. Okay, so from here, you have the belt, or if you can grab the foot, you can grab the foot, okay? If you are really lopsided, you can actually sit on a blanket. That will help you as well, okay? So I do advise you to sit on a blanket because it feels a little bit more balanced. So we have this leg up. And if you have the belt, you can slowly walk it uh, shorter if you like, but keep your spine nice and straight. For those of you who have a belt, from here, you're going to grab the belt in one hand, which is the right hand. Okay, grab the belt in the right hand. Then you're going to bring the left arm forward. Uh, I should face forward so you can see. You're going to bring this arm, the left arm, through to catch the foot. Okay? And then you turn. So we're turning again in this position. Okay? If you don't need the belt, then you would have the foot here. You bring the left arm, like hook it over. Hook the arm over, and then you grab the foot. 
as you turn your hand and grab the, up the inner foot and we twist here. So you open the chest again, turn the chest. I know this one will be very difficult for a lot of you, so don't worry if you can't do it. If it's very, it's really too difficult for you, you can just stay in uh, Padabhushtasana, okay? And release. Let's switch the blanket to the other side, and then right leg in Varasana. Okay, if you need that strap or the towel, you take it underneath the foot, or you grab underneath the foot and bring the foot up. Keep your arms straight, lengthen your spine. Only if your legs are straight and your spine is straight can you bring the leg closer to you. Work on lengthening the spine and keeping that left knee straight. Don't let the right knee go out. Keep the right knee in. Okay. From here, you take the right arm and you bring the elbow in and then grab the foot. Does that make sense? From there, you reach the arm and grab the foot. So actually, it looks like this from the side. I just saw myself in the mirror, so it looks, I think that you'll get a better idea from here. Okay, so you open the elbows away from each other and twist. Push the right elbow into the leg. And slowly release. Very good, you guys. Release your, knee, your legs forward and shake it out. Okay, from there, we're going to come into Baddha Kanasana, feet together, okay, butterfly, grabbing underneath the right foot. Okay, bring this foot up as high as you can, and then we fold into Padmasana, lotus pose, so you bring the foot up as high as you can. Okay, if you can't, if you, if lotus is very difficult for you, we try for one leg lotus, and then you bring the other foot underneath the knee. So it's like this, okay? And you work at getting this knee down lower. If not, just take your hand and lightly press on it, okay? If you can do the full Padmasana, Lotus Pose, you bring the left leg up. And then everybody, we're gonna twist over to the right side, okay? So if you're in half Lotus, that's fine. You take the left hand outside and we do a light twist. Center and twist the other side. Good, back to center, release the legs. Legs back in Baddha Kanasana. Now doing the other leg, so left foot. You know, sometimes I like to cradle a little bit and then bring the foot up higher, as high as I can. For those of you in half, you're here, bringing that foot underneath your knee. If you wanna go for the full pose, you reach the foot, you grab underneath the foot then bring it. Don't grab on top. Then from there, we start with a twist to the right. And then we twist to the left. Today is a lot of twisting. Hoping that you guys can recover from any strenuous exercise or all the live stream videos we've been doing. Sometimes you need to take it slow. Okay, so release the knees, release. Let's have a quick downward facing dog, just to release the legs. Squeeze the legs, bring your heels to the floor, squeeze the arms. Inhale, plank pose, exhale, chaturanga, lie down. Okay, from here, set your hands at your chest, point your toes, um, bring your tailbone down towards the floor, lifting those knees off the floor, but keeping your feet to the floor. So no, it's not relaxed here, really squeezing and getting those knees off the floor as, as well as your toes. So don't let lift the toes up. You come up, hugging the elbows in, Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. So arms are not straight, Mahai Tikya, Koksao, elbows bent. 
Draw the shoulders back. Pull your hands towards you. Draw the chest forward and curl your chest. Tailbone strong to the floor. And slowly release. Okay, this time, walk your hands slightly forward. And then we're going to push it straight. So arms are straight. Make your tailbone strong to the floor and lift your knees off the floor. If you want, you can walk the hands closer. Only if your hip, uh, only if your pelvis is on the floor, walk your hands closer. Then you push your toes to the floor, lifting your knees off the floor, and look back. Curl the chest. Okay, come down, chin to the center, hook your thumbs, inhale, reach up. Salabhasana, keep your feet to the floor, lift your chest. Reach your arms back, lift your chest. And slowly release, look to your right. Chin back to center, hook the other thumb on top, keep your feet to the floor. Tailbone down and lift your chest up. Reach your arms back. And slowly release, look to your left. Whew. Good, chin back to center. We're gonna go for Dhanurasana pose. Okay. So grab your ankles, keep your knees to the floor. Don't let your knees come off the floor or you're gonna lift your chest and your tailbone is going down toward the floor. Kick into your hands, lift the chest. Good, slowly come down, look to your right. Relax your legs. Chin back to center. Grab your feet, second round, point your toes. Now everything off the floor, hug the knees in, and kick into your hands, lift the chest. So top of your thighs off the floor, bottom ribs off the floor, kick even higher, squeeze the legs straighter, hug the knees in, and slowly release, look to your left. Good, push yourselves up. And lie on your back. Bring your right knee to your chest. Ekapada Pavamutasana. Squeezing that left thigh, but relaxing your right knee. And switch sides, the left knee to your chest. So the leg that is straight, your right knee, you're squeezing and working the thigh, but the top foot, the, uh, the, the foot that is the leg that you're bringing the knee to your chest, left foot is relaxed. Good, bring your both knees to your chest, Vipada Pada Rock side to side. Good, chin back to center. If you have a blanket or a block, take your blanket or block, put it to your right side. You're going to sit on the blanket or the block. Then your left foot goes over your right foot. Let me show you how it looks in the back. You sit on the blanket, left foot goes over the right foot. Okay, from there, you take your right arm and you grab above your left elbow. Swing this leg. Swing the left arm around, catch. If you can't catch the el elbow, you can actually just do a, a light twist with the right fingertips to the floor. Straighten your left arm more, open that right shoulder, and then look over to your left shoulder. Over your left shoulder. Or Switch over to the other side, sitting on the left. 
right foot over the left foot, grab above your right elbow, swing the right arm around, catch your thigh, and you start to straighten the right arm as you open that left shoulder and you find the twist, then look over the right shoulder. Again, for those of you who are not going to do this next pose, otherwise you do the same as we just did, okay? Uh, right leg, let me think, yes, left leg is in Virasana, okay? And then right leg is in half Padmasana, so you bring the left foot, the right foot up as high as you can and fold in Padmasana. From there, you take your, right, uh, your left hand underneath your right knee. And then you, you reach the right arm and grab your foot. So this is number two. If you're not able to do Padmasana, then you can go for the first, the pose that we did before. Okay, from here you open your chest, really open the right shoulder, and then look over the left shoulder. Bharapurjasana two. First we have right leg in Virasana, then left leg in Padmasana. So you grab underneath, bring the foot as high up as you can, right hand goes underneath, and then you reach this arm behind to grab the foot. And yeah, you can use the strap too around the foot if you can't grab the foot. Then you open the shoulder, and then turn, look over the right shoulder. This one I feel really opens up my shoulders. Good. And slowly release. Release the legs forward. Widen your seat. You can sit on a block or a blanket if you need to. We're going to Pashimottanasana, so grabbing the feet. You can even take the uh, towel or the belt around the feet. Or if you're more bendy, then grab your blocks in front of you and reach forward. With every inhale, lengthen the spine. With every exhale, folding over. Squeeze the legs. Inhale, come up. Exhale, release. Widen your feet as wide as the mat. Slowly roll yourself down, coming down into Shavasana. Turning your palms facing up, releasing your entire body completely. Close your eyes, taking this moment to relax your body completely. Now you can go ahead and stay in Shavasana. It was very nice having this uh, st relaxing stretch class for, with you. I know it's not completely relaxing, but it's good to have an active stretch and to really uh, be aware when you're stretching, not just relaxing or releasing and you know not working those muscles, okay? So if you have time, please try to do like a 10 minute Shavasana. It's really nice, especially during these times that we're having to really let your mind and your body relax. Okay, so I hope you guys had a good time. This uh, video will be up on my IG for 24 hours, and then I'm gonna post it onto my YouTube account at Marsha Yuan, so if you want to watch it again, or if you missed it, please catch it again, and please give me feedback. Um, I welcome messages. Um, I do respond back to you, so thank you so much for joining me. And I hope to see you again. To, uh, on Wednesday, I'll be teaching another Hatha circuit. And then on Friday, I'll be teaching another one of these uh, relaxing stretch classes. Okay, thank you so much. Bye.